Hi, welcome to McCall LLP's guidance to FA Charter Standard Clubs and Leagues on legal issues arising from the coronavirus outbreak. If you haven't already done so, just to let you know, you can access free of charge 10 guidance notes on the FA page of our website, which is www.muckle-llp.com. And these cover a range of issues which you'll no doubt be thinking about at this time from financial assistance available to clubs, what happens in relation to your facilities hire, to employment obligations and membership subs. My name is Alison Walton and I'm a partner in the commercial contracts team at Muckle Law Firm. The topic I'm going to cover now, contracts, will apply to clubs in two respects. There'll be times when you are the customer buying in goods and services and times when you're acting as the supplier in most cases providing services for payment. So it's important to know where you stand in whichever capacity you're contracting. Now, no one really wants to read a contract. The contracts that work the best are the contracts that are written, signed, and then put in a drawer and forgotten about until they expire. That's usually a good sign that nothing's gone wrong and each party's happy. However, even when the parties are getting along fine and each is performing his or her side of the contract, Sometimes things outside of the control of each party get in the way and stop the contract operating as it should. We're in those type of circumstances now. The current COVID-19 restrictions on movement, sports and trade have meant that many contracts simply can't be performed in the way they were intended for reasons entirely outside of the control of either of the parties to the contract. And that's when you dig out your contract from the drawer, you dust it off, take a look at all those boring legal bits in the back of it because these are the times when those boring legal clauses will come into play. So I'm going to talk you through two legal terms which you may well have heard of in relation to the COVID-19 restrictions already, and they are force majeure and frustration. What they mean, and I'll talk about whether they're likely to apply to your contracts that you've got now. In general, the basic position is that where there's a contract, whether it's written or verbally made, each party has committed themselves to perform their agreed obligations. And if they don't perform those obligations, then they'll have broken their side of the deal and they'll be in breach of contract. But many contracts have a standard clause written into them dealing with what are known as force majeure events. Have a look to see if your contract includes this. If your contract does have this term in it, force majeure, then it usually says something like this. Neither party will be in breach of contract for any failure or delay in performing its obligations where this is due to a force majeure event. And the force majeure event will often be defined as something like any circumstances which are beyond the party's control. And if it applies, this is essentially a get out of jail free card for a supplier who's having difficulty in getting supplies to you or difficulty in performing services since it usually operates so as to pause the contract, either while those circumstances continue or a pause for a defined period. And a party which is able to rely on a valid and enforceable force majeure clause won't be in breach of contract and you won't be able to sue them. Now, it could also work in your favour if, for example, you're unable to provide certain things, such as sponsorship rights, because no games are being played at present, or if you're a club playing at step three or below, the season's now concluded early. But with force majeure, it's absolutely all about the wording of the clause itself. So this really is where you need to dust off that contract and read it. The first thing you need to look for in your contract is what a force majeure event really means. Now, there isn't any legal definition of this word. So what it means is purely down to what the contract says is allowed to be a force majeure event. It'll often say something like, any event or circumstance beyond the reasonable control of the parties, including, without limitation, act of God, war, natural disaster, flood, fire, terrorism, etc. And it might even say disease, epidemic or pandemic. And often when you're looking at these clauses for something to do with the coronavirus, it won't be as specific as this. So you end up relying on catch all wording like any event beyond the reasonable control of the party. Now, the second thing to look at is what the force majeure clause actually says. Sometimes they're very short and sometimes they're quite long and detailed. And it depends on what the contract relates to. 
Usually the party affected by the force majeure event will be required to give some form of notice to the other party that they're affected by these circumstances and that they can't perform their side of the contract. And you need to think carefully about this notice. What does it say? Is the supplier actually prevented from performing its obligations or has it just become more expensive for them or more difficult? And are there actually workarounds that could be put in place? Also, there might be a provision that says that the party unaffected by the force majeure event can terminate the contract after a continuous period of non-performance. So, for example, it could be 90 days without services or supplies allows you as the customer to terminate the contract. In summary, force majeure is a concept which doesn't exist unless your contract has it expressly written into it. And even then it's all down to the wording. It might just operate to excuse non-performance or delay in performance of a contract where this is due to COVID-19 restrictions. Now, the second concept I wanted to mention is something called frustration of contract. And this is a legal concept which has existed for a really long time. And your suppliers might mention that it applies in the current COVID-19 restrictions. Unlike force majeure that we've just spoken about, the concept of frustration applies regardless of what the contract says. And it's not something you'd usually see written into a contract, but it does exist nevertheless. Now, if a contract is frustrated, then what that means in legal terms is that the contract will just fall away. And generally speaking, each party is entitled to be put back into the position they were in before the contract was entered into. So money's paid over should be repaid and the obligations just cease and fall away. And this is most likely to come into play if, for example, you've contracted either to receive or provide a service for the 2019-2020 season, and that season's now ended early unexpectedly, which ultimately means a party can't continue to perform its side of the original deal. In general, frustration applies where something occurs after the contract's been entered into, it's not due to the fault of either party, and thirdly, it renders further performance illegal impossible or makes it radically different from that contemplated by the parties when they entered into the contract. Now as lawyers we'd never advise trying to rely on frustration alone as it's always down to the court's really narrow interpretation as to whether an event will constitute frustration of the contract or not but guidance can be taken from decisions of the courts in the past and if possible similarity to the coronavirus restrictions at the moment are the old cases that during the coronation and this is where contracts couldn't be performed as contemplated when the coronation of King Edward VII was postponed due to his illness. And in those circumstances, the contracts in question were deemed to have been frustrated. Now, frustration won't be permitted where the contract's simply more expensive to perform, or an alternative means of performance is available, or the supply has been let down by its own suppliers further down the supply chain. So to summarise, Firstly, contracts have absolute obligations, and usually the parties can't be excused from them, no matter how difficult performance gets. Sometimes the contracts will have a clause written into it, which excuses a party from a failure to perform, where that's due to an event beyond its control, provided it gives notice and follows set procedures. In rare circumstances, the court could cancel a contract due to frustration or impossibility to perform. And it might be that some contracts do fall into this very narrow category as a result of COVID-19. And if there are no excusing causes for a failure to perform, then you might be into the realms of breach of contract by the supplier, which could lead to termination and claims for damages. Now you'll find further details covering everything I've talked about to refer back to in our free FA guidance notes. So check out the website for details. You'll find the FA page under the heading, What We Do at www.muckle-llp.com and if you're a charter standard club or league then you can access the FA legal helpline for up to 30 minutes free advice on any matter. We're here to help so if you have any queries please do get in touch and in the meantime please stay safe and well.